Hi, welcome everybody to Music, Medicine, and Machines. Uh, we're an offbeat meetup that meets um, on a regular basis in the DC and the New York City area to discuss music, machines, and technology. So with me today, I have um, Bill Bavier, uh, uh, Vice President from NTT Data Services, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about how NTT Data is responding to um, COVID. So, um, Bill, can you share with me a little bit more about your background? Sure. Um, I've been doing a lot in technology for over 25 years. Uh, the last three years have really been focused on things around what is our smart technologies um, and really headquartered from the Japan or coming from our Japan headquarters as to an initiative of one NTT and what are smart solutions that our CEO Jun Suwada uh, has as his forefront of one of his legacy, uh, how to have his legacy once he, he finishes through at NTT at some point. And really it's trying to bring that technology to uh, starting with cities and then moving beyond cities uh, where we can take some of these uh, sensor-based and big database solutions and, and give insight and analytics around it to help people to, to get better in, in society of how they're going uh, using the data that's out there and data-driven solutions. Great, and how did you uh, get into this role at NTT Data and, and what what is exciting about it for you? So I, I got into the role because it was uh, one of the first truly one NTT approaches. So NTT is a lot of operating companies, a lot of different parts of the world, and we're trying to make it um, come together and, and use the best of all of them in, in certain projects and, and product development. And for this one, uh, NTT raised their hand, NTT Data Services raised their hand and said we would be the systems integrator. And then our CEO at the time, John McCain and Tim Conway, the president of the public sector business unit said, uh, Bill, we want you to do this, but uh, don't mess it up. So that was the big part of what I had to do that. So uh, there was some pressure there to make sure I didn't mess it up, but I don't think we have. And um, uh, really got into the part early and, and now lead uh, the go-to-market team that we have out there and uh, have been involved for the three years since its inception. And it is really exciting because it's, we, we try to do the one, um, bring it together as one company and do things that can be used by all the companies. Um, and it's really uh, fits a lot of the mission and vision of NTT overall to do what's best for society. And, and there is a societal nature to it. And, and it's really neat to see this come together where you can help citizens or companies do things with um, the, the influx of all the data we have out there uh, in a very unique way and, and then try to make it for the betterment of, of the company. But also, you know, really the bottom line is the betterment of the citizens and the people out there that use that are affected by those decisions. So it's it's changing every day and it, it's it's awesome. And we're kind of a small startup inside of a big company. So we, we really can react quick to a lot of things and change direction uh, given how the market goes and what's happening in the world. And we've done some of that with the, the things that came up with COVID all, you know, all of a sudden for from the US perspective, but even globally how fast that came on, we've been able to adapt some things on, on that front. Yeah, you know, I've really been quite uh, truly amazed at how quickly um, NTT has been able to adapt and, in fact, innovate in response to this pandemic. I, I was really just amazed by it. And listening to um, some of these use cases that are occurring across the country, I would certainly like to hear more about how is NTT data responding and, in fact, innovating in due to this pandemic and how are we helping the common citizen. So a couple a couple examples of how that, that's happened. And there are some what we call transactional solutions. Think of it as contact tracing is one. That's a, a big term that's out there right now. NTT Data Services put together a solution for the city of Austin and um, has that out there quickly for them to help, help them track and record uh, and keep record of, of who people have uh, been contracting the disease, what, who they've been in contact with, and then share that with officials. That's one avenue. The other avenue, and, and that, that data can feed our, 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 what we call the Accelerate Smart Platform and, and use that information um, to help the city make some decisions and, and inform citizens. Um, another part is really what's gonna happen as people start to go back to work or open things up, 
And, and that side of things, um, we looked at it and said, we, we don't want to just have a, a, a pandemic response, a COVID response solution, but how is business going to change? And what we've uh, working with the city of Las Vegas are, are implementing some uh, thermal scanning and some occupancy notifications for them on buildings um, to know how many people are in there. Uh, and then thermal as people come in to help give them a notification. Uh, there's, there's a debate how much value that adds, but, but overall it's really to, to say how can they do things to make the, the employee, the citizen, the, the visitor feel more comfortable that the, uh, the city is doing everything they can to, to get, gain information you know, rightly um, and, and then share it out, not, not a nefarious way to gain information, but really people are coming into a building, let's see you know, if they have a temperature, if they are, make sure they're, they're feeling okay, um, and then also track how many people are in the building and give notifications as they're starting to, to get full um, to capacity of whatever that capacity is and then share that with the workers and the, the visitors that are coming for them to, to start to utilize. And we think beyond the COVID situation, that's information that, that is valuable to uh, any entity out there, uh, be it a city or another company, uh, retail or uh, healthcare or manufacturing facility or a stadium event to say, what is the capacity? How close are we? What sections are, are being um, utilized the most and, and share that information with the citizen. So um, one, they, they can make more of their own decisions of, do I go to that area or not? Or um, some we're doing with uh, uh, public transportation, ma mass transit to say, how many people are in a, in a platform at a time uh, to let them know, should they go to do that or not? We're doing that more with a, a city in Australia, but it's how should they, how does that help them make decisions uh, where their health is at risk and, and just you know, use that to the, to the better good for what they're doing. And, and those are the kind of things we're reacting to with our solutions now. Yeah, and, and that makes sense too, because when you think of going to public buildings or, you know, returning to the office, um, I know a lot of companies are reevaluating, you know, return to the office. How do we implement that strategy? I think that's the biggest question we have is, America is opening back up. So how do we return to the office? So how do we look at that approach? So it's really, you know, how do you return to the office safely? And, and the safely is different for every person. It's, it's almost an individual choice as well as a corporation choice to say, um, what are the guidelines they want to put in place? Um, so we fit that within our technology to track um, people coming in and out and, and, uh, give notifications of, of how many people are in the building at a time. And then um, what can be done is to share that back to the individual to say, you know, this is how crowded an office is today, or this is how crowded a building is. Um, and then they have that choice to decide that that's okay for them and comfortable, or that's not. Um, and some level is the, the organization needs to have that on their, their minds because if there's guidelines they're supposed to work within, which could be different by every state, how, do, how are they acting to make sure they stay within those guidelines, which um, the health experts say are, are, are most important to function within. So it's the, it's, we call it situational awareness for both the citizen and the, the company to to really understand what's happening and, and what's the data they have. Um, and it can be done as easily and simply as, you know, standing there and tracking it of your people going in and people going out to the standpoint of really managing what's going on. And, and some people say that may not be safe because they're too close and, and different things. So if you can do it with technology, you can use that information and then you can even you know, report off of that, share that with the citizens straight uh, directly uh, or the visitors, the employees as well. So uh, mm -hmm. that's the level that we're going at to try to make companies, corporations feel comfortable that they have the data they need and then how they share it with their employees or visitors is, is really then to make sure that person feels comfortable, whatever their comfort level may be. Yeah, it's almost like turning on the light switch within a building, you know, you, you add in the appropriate technologies and it's like turning on a light switch and then you're collecting all this data. So it's almost like setting up network nodes in different various points, collecting the data that doesn't violate anybody's, you know, privacy, right? You're just collecting yeah. 
basic data attributes that can help feed into a platform, a system where you're basically massaging the data, you're getting these inputs, and then you can give it back to the management and then also maybe to citizens in a dashboard, say, you walk into the office and you can get the office stats for the day so you can understand what sort of risk tolerance you're willing to bend with. Right, exactly. And, and, and the part that we had is the analytics that goes along to look at those tolerance levels or those, those attributes, uh, and then also start to predict those because you start to see patterns and trends by time of day, certain weather conditions, certain activities or meetings going on in a building. You can start to understand that and you can let the, the officials and citizens know what's going on. We, we kind of render that data to the corporation. How they share it back to a citizen or an employee is, is their, their, that's up to them how to do. But we give them the awareness with um, our analytics on top of just the data gathering, the analytics to say, here's what's really happening and how can they use that to uh, better their operations and, and help with that risk profile that they want to share for themselves and with their their employees or, or citizens coming in mm -hmm. yeah i think it would make sense to to share the information because you know in las vegas high volume city you know built built on tourism you know people going into the casinos want to see that data they want to understand what's you know based on my risk tolerance what's going to be going on in the casino that day and and it seems like this platform would be very appropriate for sharing that type of information. It would. I mean, people are limiting entrances and exits, so that's a big part. And we've only been doing it with the city itself, not the casinos, because they're buildings. But that's a natural extension that is possible to say uh, the casinos or retail shops or uh, grocery stores that people look at. And that was a big part when, uh, you know, in the height of uh, the initial part of the pandemic was everybody, you know, can I go to the grocery store? How many people are there? Um, this would be something that can help them um, go to what's comfortable for them as an individual when that's shared further out to them. That, that's absolutely our direction. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, being an information driven society that, you know, people want this type of data nowadays and, and it makes them feel more empowered and, you know, able to make a better informed decision for sure. And, and there's other aspects that come in. I mean, just of, the data of who's in and who's out, but um, what section of the building are they in? Is that still safe? There may be a number, but we can monitor certain areas um, with how that data is gathered um, and share that information and even play some messages back. If it seems to be too crowded, you can play a, a, a message over the uh, address system and, and say, you know, please don't forget to keep your distancing in place. Or whatever the environment is, or you know, beyond the pandemic, it is. Um, how's that data valuable to them to help make the the experience of the citizen better wherever they go? And and in a building, it could be that it's overcrowded in the work area, so I don't really want to go in today because I think there'll be some level of remote working. I think a large level, but remote working still going on, but some combination. Um, mm -hmm. And in stores, a casino, a retail store is. Uh, is it is it a good time to go? Is it a, is it too crowded for my my personal condition? Um, and then is it from a business? It's one of the busy times to make sure that I know I have the right coverage of my employees here to to help satisfy what the uh, the citizens need. So all that data, depending on what your lens is to look at, it's the same data, but it could be valuable in a different way to the people. And that's the technology we bring um, to the views of of that data story is what we call it. Right. Yeah, you know, New York City um, has set up checkpoints, as we'll call them, in, in different parts of their of their city. It's not really like what you would think of as a checkpoint, but I know at some of the major um, transportation hubs, you know, like some of the train stations and yeah. and areas like that. How could the COVID platform that NTT has created? How could that apply to that situation to help maybe the mayor? of New York City make better and more informed decisions about the traffic flow coming in and out of some of those major transportation hubs? Uh, that's actually what we're doing with uh, uh, in a pilot program with the city in Australia is to, to monitor. So in New York City, if you know um, how many people are in a, a, a platform or a train station that they go into a subway station or a bus station, um, and then 
how many people, what are the times that they're there, what, time, what days of the week. Um, should they be running more buses into that time at certain times of the day? So the mayor can help do that, use that information to potentially use that information to adjust um, the services they provide. Uh, do they need to have more um, emergency personnel there at certain times of the day because it's usually when it's more crowded? Um, what it, a lot of it is, what are the conditions going to look like um, as more people come back to work? Is it going to be like it was in February or is it going to be like it was in April or is it going to be something totally different? And, and that's kind of the, the awareness that you can provide and then start to give insights to that data that was gathered, um, be it from a, a ticket data that, that's used. I was looking at you know, a ticket, a phone that you use as a ticket, but ticketing information, um, volumes of crowd information um, and, and where they're at. Um, some people are even looking to, to start to say, hey, platform, section A of a platform is too, goes onto a part of a train that might be too busy. Please go to section B or C at this point for your citizens so they feel more um, informed about what, how they can get on a train safer, as an example. And, and that is no matter if it's response to coming back from COVID situation or a pandemic or just how, how can I make a, uh, the travel experience for a citizen that much better and more enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, the the possibilities here are almost endless. I, I can imagine here in the back of my mind that if you're collecting this data about traffic flow, then you can even optimize the train services and when they run and when they don't run, which impacts bottom line. Um, so it just right. sounds like and, they're- and Not only that, but, but society, sorry to cut you off, that, that impacts society too. So are you running trains and causing um, a carbon imprint that is not needed. Um, can you be more efficient? Can you get, um, you know, some people are looking at transit on demand, um, almost mm -hmm. like you had car share, but maybe there's a transit part that goes to say, when are the times that we can do that? So those are absolutely things that are, I'll say beyond the COVID response that we think this is allowing us to get that data and making it aware to the, the, the officials as well as the operators and and some to the bottom line of that yeah yeah I, I mean it just sounds like there's a lot of great possibilities so um is there is there anything else you want to add or share that we haven't covered about what ntt is doing in response to um covid19 and some of the technologies we're using i think the only part i'd add is is we're Again, I think I reiterated, we're trying to look at not just a response to COVID-19, but what do you do beyond that? So trying to put technology in that can help with COVID-19 reactions, but also can help for business as you go to the future. As you said, the endless possibilities now that you have some additional data sources. And, and from our side, from NTT, what we look at is how to you know, analyze that, um, if react, if help get reactive and predictive outcomes that uh, you can help with officials to see that. So it's really that, use that, uh, that data as an, an analytic tool um, to go to the future. And that's, that's really what we're trying to, to help make those data-based um, decisions off of that data rather than just instinct or anything like that, but uh, make, them, make the officials and the decision makers aware of all the data components that might be affecting their decision now. Right, and, and so we're, we're now looking at a case of okay, we have this situation. Now I have all these data points. I can really truly make an informed data and not make a, a decision based on a wing and a prayer, so to speak. I uh, absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. That is what we're trying to drive towards. And, and we make situation, and, and we focus it on awareness because we don't want to do the proactive policing, but we want to enable the people to, to understand those data components to make that better decision. Hope, you know, that's the hope is that they'll make a better decision with more data. Well, and, and, and if you think about it, what we're gonna, what we want to evolve to, right, is um, to a point where, you know, this happens again in the future, right? I mean, diseases evolve and, and there's outbreaks, right? But we wanna get to a point where we don't have to quarantine down into a draconian, you know, state, right, to, um, so to speak, flatten the curve. We want to be able to kind of, 
I would say adjust the le lever so the response is more uh, subtle, but it's also more effective and less disruptive to local to national economies. I mean, that's where we really want to get to. Right, and I think that's, that, that's um, we, we can't go all the way with our system that way, but we can help with some of that process uh, as, as it moves forward with, with the areas where we do track certain data and how we can give the insights and the, um, the analytics that come with it from both, uh, again, reactive and predictive things that can happen. And then that can be used to help make uh, the reaction by, by the officials and the citizens less severe, hopefully, because they, they have more informed information to, to make a decision that there is in their comfort level. Right. Right. Well, well, thank you for giving that overview and, and for that conversation. This has certainly been very educational. I would like to shift it to a slightly more fun topic, which is music, which is our third part of the meetup. And, you know, I come from a musical family myself. Um, my dad used to get all my brothers and sisters together and they would play the piano and then they would sing in harmony. And I understand you come from a, a musical family yourself. Um, yeah, but I'm the least musical of all of them. But yes, I do come from that. Uh, my my parents, my father was played uh, trumpet in some small time big band. My mother was a singer uh, at the church choir and, and just out, uh, family does that. I have a nephew that's on Broadway, another that does shows up in Connecticut. So they got that to tint. Um, my side is is less than that for, for my end, but we do enjoy it uh, a lot and uh, enjoy both the music and the song that goes with it. And even now got to experience one of these drive-in movie uh, concerts this past week, which was really interesting to see how concerts are trying to come back as a uh, uh, live-in drive-in and, and see how it goes. So it, it's neat to get out and, and see that part come back because I think it's important for people to see those those musical side of and the arts and entertainment to come back because um, that's the part of everybody feeling together and you kind of were together but apart and, and it was it was great um, so just love to see that come together as we go forward. Yeah, I um, I was talking with in our last meetup chat. I was talking with a DJ from Austin and he was sharing how it's been impacting the music industry. But he came up with an idea where you know you could have an event, a musical event, and people could sit in these little quarantine like glass cases right and i thought that was a great idea and then on facebook i saw a picture of a concert and these people had like little um like these little stages where they could go up on the stage they had two to four seats and they had railings to kind of sequester them off from people i thought it was a genius idea yeah, that is inside inside those venues are that's great. And and the one this week that I was at was at a, a parking lot of a baseball stadium and everybody had certain places they could be with their car and then everybody got out and sat on the roof of their car and watched the stage and then got in their car and left. So it was great. It was just like a drive in theater. That sounds like a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it and uh, learning more about what NTT is doing, as well as a little more about your musical interests. I appreciate it, Laura. Thanks for the time and uh, really enjoyed the time today. Okay, great. Thanks everybody for tuning in.